Thanks, Donna. Um, uh, Donna always uh, picks out some special guests in the crowd to introduce. I'd like to introduce uh, one special guest to you. I have uh, Phil Shepard here with me. Phil's a uh, consultant at McVantage, and his wife, Angel, is with him. And it's important you see Phil for two reasons. One is he's a great guy, and everyone should get to know him. And secondly, he's going to figure prominently in my talk later on at some point today. So uh, that's Phil. He's the hardest, working at the hardest working guy at McVantage, because whenever hard work comes in, I assign it to <laughs> Phil. <laughs> As Donna said, today not only am I speaking to the group here, but we're going out through Facebook Live and going out to the, uh, the entire world here. If at some point during, the de during my talk the feed drops, we'll know that I've gone too far in talking about Facebook. <laughs> so how many of you have a Facebook account? Let me see those hands. That's, that's about three quarters. That's pretty much most of you. How many of you remember the original Facebook when you went to college and there was a book that had the pictures of all the freshmen in it? <laughs> you all remember that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I remember that. That's you know, as a freshman, you were trying to figure out who to ask out. You'd go through the Facebook page, or if somebody asked you out, you'd go through and try to try to find them. And so that, of course, is where uh, Mark Zuckerberg got the idea. Well, <laughs> there's actually a court case about where Mark Zuckerberg got the idea. Um, he got sued by some guys who said he got the idea from them. But uh, Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook, and it's uh, it's been a, a very big thing in our culture. And so uh, I'm going to start off talking about what I consider to be um, Facebook's original sin. And so the original sin of Facebook is their business model. Now, Mark Zuckerberg recently testified before Congress, and so I have a quote here from uh, part of that testimony. Um, Senator Orrin Hatch, um, he was a little confused about, hey, about how Facebook worked. And so he said, how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? To which Zuckerberg responded, Senator, we run ads. <laughs> And how many ads did they run? Well, last year, Facebook ran $40 billion worth of ads. And so the original sin I say of Facebook is, what they did is they made, instead of your, instead of your customers being your customers, Facebook's customers were their product. So when we go to Facebook, we're not the customers there. We're the product. We're being sold the ads. And so not only do they sell us ads, but they use our information to target those ads. And so you're thinking, okay, well, that's, that's interesting, you know, but how, you know, just, just what kind of information would Facebook have about me? Well, you might be a little surprised. Facebook has a lot of information about you. Depending on how you're set up and how you're accessing Facebook, Facebook can know all of these things about you. You know, we're, we're always sure that you know, they know our birthday because they won't let us sign up without our birthday. They're not supposed to give that out to anybody. Supposed to being the key word. Okay. Um, they also know about our check-ins. Let me see. There we go. So wherever you check in, they can tell your location. But another thing is, if you're using Facebook from your phone, they know your location pretty much all the time. So we'll see a little bit more about that later. So Facebook knows where you check in. They know where you go. They've got all your photos. They know details about your relationships. They are even trying to figure out your religion and your race. You can give them the religion information, but then they try and figure out what your race is. So all these things are things that Facebook could know about you, some of which you've given to them, some of which they try and figure out. Now, two other ways that Facebook can get information. One is Facebook has a lot of apps on it. Any of you all played Farmville? Any Farmville people on there? So Facebook has games. It has different apps. When you sign up to use an app in Facebook, your information is shared with whoever created that app. We'll be talking a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Another way Facebook finds out about you is by something called cross-site login. Now, the next part there is my comment on this. Don't ever do this. But what happens with cross-site login is you go to some other website completely unaffiliated with Facebook. This is actually from something called Sign Up Genius. I use this to sign up for tennis matches with my friends. When you go to sign up Genius, they'll ask you, oh, do you want to sign in with your account or do you want to log in with your Facebook account? And you think, oh, gee, I can just log in with my Facebook account. That's easy. I don't have to keep up with another password. Well, when you log in with your Facebook account, that means that Facebook will share your information with sign up Genius and sign up Genius will share their information with Facebook. 
So whenever you do a cross-site login, you're just saying, here's somebody else that I want to give my information to and who's going to give information back to Facebook. Facebook has also started selling various things. And they actually have a way on Facebook where you can send money to a friend. To do that, you give them your credit card number. Well, <laughs> fortunately, they're not selling those yet. But what they do with the credit card number is they can take your credit card number and get information from vendors and match up that credit card number to purchases. So they can know what you've purchased from different places. So Facebook, you give them some information, but they go out and get a lot of other information. So one of the questions you're probably thinking about is, what does Facebook know about me? How can I figure out these things? So we're going to take a quick look at Facebook and see exactly what does Facebook know about us. OK, so here's my profile on Facebook. Um, a few years ago, I used to use Facebook mainly to tell people about my great exploits on the tennis court. More recently, I've been using Facebook to tell about the joint replacements I've had because of my playing tennis. <laughs> so it's, it's not too exciting, but there I am with my kids up in, uh, up in Boone. And so when you log into Facebook, up here in the corner, there's a little thing you may not have noticed, a little triangle. This little triangle is where you can access different things about your account. And the thing we're going to look at today is your settings. So when you go to Facebook, you've got these different settings that you can take a look at. Now, I would encourage you to go through these different settings and see exactly what it is you've shared with somebody. Now, I'm not too concerned that they know that I like Fahrenheit. But things like your email address, your phone, all that stuff is in here. And so go through and check these out. A lot of these things you can go in and remove. Facebook won't let you remove your, your email address or your phone number. But there's also a way to make sure that doesn't get shared on your profile. So go through these different things and take a look and see what's out there. Now, the thing I'd like to focus on today is the place where it talks about the ads. Now, right over here, you'll see there's a place for the ads. And this has to do with your ad preferences. Now, when you go in here, it's always kind of dangerous to look in there. You may find some you know, things you expected to know. You may find some subversive organizations you didn't know you were, you were being tracked by or things like that. Let's see who's been looking at my Facebook. All right. OK, it's taking a little while here. So down here under the Ad Settings. Oops, I'm sorry. Up here under your interest, this is where you can find these things. So in here, you'll see there's uh, at least one subversive organization on my list here. There's the John Locke Foundation. <laughs> so whenever somebody here says, oh, go out and like our page, I, of course, go out and do that. And so now what it's showing you is these are the things that it thinks I'm interested in. So it thinks I'm interested in the John Locke Foundation. And this has got weird things like company and organization. If you click on any of these, it will tell you what type of ads you might get because of that interest. But a crucial thing is when you point to it, you'll see there's an X here. And so with that X, you can turn off that preference. So that way you can go in and turn off these things. Now, one of the places that they, uh, they hide a little bit is over here under the More uh, section. There's a thing called Lifestyle and Culture. Now, the Lifestyle and Culture, I've gone in and cleaned up, <laughs> not just for this presentation. <laughs> But in general, to keep Facebook from knowing things about me. Now, the first time I went in here, Facebook knew that I was white and that I was conservative. When Phil went in there, it knew that Phil was African American and ultra conservative. <laughs> now, as you all can see, one of those things you know is not true about Phil. <laughs> He's just a conservative. Now, um, so Phil had had him as an African American and had his political views as ultra conservative. Now, around the office, I'm probably a little bit to the right of Phil. But there's something that Phil did that made Facebook think that. So they've got this information out there about Phil. And it turns out that the information was wrong. But they were serving ads and selling that information to other people about him. So again, go through and check these things out. Make sure you know that what information you want to be sharing. And make sure the information that, that you're sharing, if you do want to share it, that it's correct. So you can go in and, and take those things out in Facebook. 
Okay, so with uh, Facebook, we can go through and check these different things under the, uh, under the ad settings and all of that. There's another thing that I'd encourage you to do, and that is I'd encourage you to go out and find out all of what Facebook is tracking on you. And you can do that through the general settings. So if we go back, come out here to the general account settings, right here there's an option that says download a copy. I would encourage you to do that. Download a copy of the information that Facebook has about you. It'll take them a little while to do this. They have to go through and, and go in and do that. I'm sorry, is there something you're not seeing there? It, it, may not be on the, it may not be on the mobile version. Some of the settings are different on the mobile version than on the, the uh, computer version. So, um, but if you tell it to download your information, then it'll download something and put it into what's called an HTML file. So right now it looks like I'm still on the web, but this is actually information that's on my computer itself. And these are all the things that Facebook has about me. And so you notice it has all the posts that I've ever made all the photos that I've ever put up, all the videos I've ever put up, all the comments I've ever made, all the likes or reactions that I've had on any of the pages. And of course it knows who my friends are and it has all these different things. Now as we go down through here, let's see where's the, the locations here. So right down here, here's the location history. Now, when I found out that they were tracking my location history, I, I did turn this off. <laughs> so you can see the last, the, the last time it was was the, um, in 2017. But down here, it knows that I was on vacation in Sunset Beach. It's got all these different places. So there's your, whole, there's your whole set of your locations. So Facebook knows where I was and where my phone was calling into Facebook to say, okay, he's here now. To delete the locations, you can only do that through your mobile app. So on your phone, there's a place you can go in and not only turn off the locations, but go out and delete those locations. So I left them in here just so y'all could see them. I figured out about a year ago that, hey, they're doing this, and I don't want them doing that anymore. So I turned it off. They don't track me anymore, but they still have all of those locations. And so go through and check out and see, what is it that Facebook knows about you? Now, one last thing we'll talk about is uh, something that may be important to you, and that is how to uh, delete your account. So if you decide you're, you're sick of Facebook, then right here you can go in under Manage Account. This is in your account settings. And in here you can do two things. One is you can tell them, what do you want done with your Facebook when you die? <laughs> so that's your legacy contact. You can put a legacy contact in here, so when you die, that person can become kind of the administrator of your Facebook, and then it becomes a legacy account. People can go look at it, but of course it can't be updated anymore. Or you can tell them, when I die, delete my account. The other thing is down here is deactivate your account. So down there, when you click on the blue deactivate your account, it will deactivate your Facebook account. It will not delete everything that's out there. <laughs> It'll delete the things that it tracks on you but if any of your friends have liked something of yours or commented on something of yours, the information still may be out there. So there is the old saying, the internet is forever. So you think, oh, I can delete these things. They may be hanging out out there somewhere. Yeah? How do they know when you're dead? How do they know when you're dead? Yeah. Um, that's a scary question, isn't it? Um, I'm not exactly sure how they know when you're dead. But um, um, part of it is, you know, someone, your legacy contact can go in and tell them and then, um, so they can go in and turn it into a legacy account. Or, um, you know, I guess, in, yeah, in the, the contact is really the one that's, that's going to tell them about that information. Okay. They're, they're not going to, yeah, so they can delete the account. Or you can tell, yeah, that you can tell that when that happens to go ahead and delete it. Read your or newspaper, that's right. <laughs> or they, they find your location stays the same <laughs> for a long time. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure. That's, a, that's an excellent question. I'm not sure I wanted the answer to that. Okay. <clears throat> so Facebook has all this information out there. Now people say, okay, well, that's interesting. It's got all this information. What's happened with that information? Now, we know that they've been giving it to advertisers for years. And sometimes I'm not that concerned about them giving it to advertisers because they're going to give me ads anyway. At least I want those ads to be for tennis shoes and not for 
you know, something I'm not interested in. So a lot of times we think, okay, it's cool that they've got this information. They know me. They'll give me better ads. But then there are some other people out there that can get this information and use it for their own purposes. And so uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint now. So uh, as the information became more and more uh, ubiquitous, everybody was in there, people across the board, somebody thought maybe we could use this for campaigns. And so the Obama campaign in 2010 made an app. And so this was an app that you could download, you could put on your computer, you put on your iPhone. But the app linked in to your information on Facebook. And so they, they, they put that out there. Okay, yeah, this will link into your information on Facebook. Everybody said fine with that. But what it also did is it linked into all the information of your friends. So when you gave permission for your information, it also gave permission for your friends. So the Obama campaign had this uh, app. They were able to use that. And what they did is they would come up with ads and things and target them and send them to you and say, you should send these to your friends. And so they were using that information to go out and figure out how can we target people more effectively. That's the big thing in, in politics now is how can we target the people? Who are the people that we want to get this information or who are these people that we want to make sure we get out to the polls? Okay, so he did that in 2010. And what did, what did we hear about that in 2010? That's exactly what we heard, nothing. <laughs> in 2010, the Obama campaign used all this information. No one cared. But then Facebook did something terrible. They allowed conservatives to get to that information. OK, so uh, when the conservatives got to that information, um, people got really upset. And then especially when Hillary lost the election. You know, then whose fault was it? Well, it couldn't have been hers. It had to have been Facebook's. So there's a guy that I got a quote from that I, I really dislike. But um, on Wired Magazine, there was a guy who was writing about uh, the internet and its role and everything. And so he talks about, you know, uh, a little bit about, you know, transparency and all this kind of stuff. But here's the key thing that he said. He said this in March. He said, but the past year has shown how the same personal data has been weaponized to suppress minority voters radicalize young white men, exploit political beliefs to sow division, and possibly swing elections. So when Donald Trump wins the election, all this stuff is terrible. You know, when Obama did it, it was all fine. But now, look what it's doing. What's this information being used for? All of these things. Now, one of the questions that you have to ask about this is, <laughs> what information do they have? It must be better than what we've seen so far. So, but they're saying, okay, now we've really got to make some moves on this because this is what happened. And so one of the, uh, one of the groups that uh, got this information was a group called Cambridge Analytica. You all have heard of Cambridge Analytica? When I was going to talk about them, I initially went out and did a internet search for images of Mordor. You know, in <laughs> Lord of the Rings, that's the place, you know, where, they, where the evil lived. But then I went to their, their website and I found something even scarier. Okay, so Cambridge Analytica, data, data drives all we do. Cambridge Analytica uses data to change audience behavior. That's a big claim. <laughs> That's a very big claim. So what did Cambridge Analytica do? Cambridge Analytica wanted to get information from Facebook. And by this time, Facebook had changed some policies and so you weren't, they weren't going to give the data to Cambridge Analytica. So what Cambridge Analytica did is they had this professor, and they got him to write a survey. It was a little survey app. You remember I talked about those apps on Facebook? There was a little survey app, and you would go in and take this survey. And it had nothing to do with politics. It was called your digital life. So you go in and take this survey, and when you take the survey, you click and say, you can have my information. And who else's information does it get? All of your friends. That's right. So Cambridge Analytica ended up getting information about the people that took the survey, plus all of their friends. So Cambridge Analytica took that data and then repackaged it. Some went to the Trump campaign. Some went to Ted Cruz's campaign. So there's a big thing about did they commit fraud, and there's some, legis there's some uh, legal stuff going on about that right now. But basically, they got the same information that the Obama campaign had got, and they shared it with these other people. 
Now, the thing is, I think a lot of people believe what Cambridge Analytica says, that they use the data to change audience behavior. So I'm wondering what data did they use on Phil as the African-American ultra-conservative to change his behavior? <laughs> so there's a lot of claims about, oh boy, the internet is just destroying our democratic process. It's doing all these things. Is it really? Now, of course, the other thing that um, Facebook got in trouble with was the Russian troll farms. Now, Russian troll farms, I'm sure many of you are saying they actually grow trolls. No, so what Russian, what Russian troll farms are is these are uh, you know, computer centers somewhere in Russia, and they do a couple of things. One is they were buying Facebook ads, and the second is they were creating fake accounts. And so that's what the troll part of it is. They made all these fake accounts, and then they would put things up from these fake accounts. And so these are some of the ads that the Russian troll farms put out there. Now the first ad, of course, that one must have been targeted at me. They knew that I was a Christian, and I was sitting there thinking, gosh, I think Hillary's probably okay. And then one day I look and it says, Satan, if Clinton wins, and then Jesus says, not if I can help it, press like if you want to help Jesus win. And so of course, at that moment, I thought, gosh, I'd like to help Jesus win. I better not vote for Hillary. It just changed my behavior, just like that. So that was one of the ads. It was very subtle, very subtle ads. See how the nuance they're getting to you there? Now, a second one was, the, uh, was from, a, this is one of the troll accounts, Blacktivist. But they had this thing about, never forget, the, the Black Panthers form, uh, group formed to protect black people from KKK. It was dismantled by the government, but the KKK exists today. So this is one of the ads that they put out there just to, in general, show, uh, sow dissatisfaction with people. To say, okay, you know, if you're an African American, you can't trust the government. You know, we know that they, tried, they said this and they did this, so that's another one of those things. And probably the truth of that ad is not so great either. So they had these, these different ads that are coming out. Another ad that they put out is the Not My President rally. You know, again, a lot of people have said, oh, the Russians, they were really trying to swing the election for Donald Trump. Well, after they swung it, then they're trying to get rid of him. Well, now, what they were trying to do in, in the main with these ads is they were trying to sow discontent, trying to, you know, that whatever divides were in the country to push on those more. Now, one of the things that is compelling is down here they have, you know, 33,000 people are interested. You know, you can see some different things about how many shares there were, that sort of thing. So these things may have been distributed quite widely, or they may have been distributed quite widely among the troll accounts. So we don't know if we can actually trust these numbers, because they were put up by people that were fake accounts. So the fake accounts may have, re may have liked them, may have said that they were going to be coming. But it is true that these things may have gone out pretty widely. OK, so, so Facebook's got all this information on us, and now all of a sudden people are using it for campaigns, and are using it to try and change people's minds, swing elections. Now, you can debate about how effective that really was, but that goes out there. So, of course, what's going to happen? Well, when that you know, comes out, then Mr. Zuckerberg goes to Washington. So Congress called Mark Zuckerberg, the president of Facebook, called him to testify before Congress. Now, many of you, as you look at this picture of Mark Zuckerberg, you may think, that seems somewhat familiar to me. And a lot of people recognize that. He sort of reminds me of someone. <laughs> of course, this is Lieutenant Data from Star Trek. Now, what I've heard is that one of the big things they told Mark Zuckerberg when they were preparing him for his testimony before Congress is, don't forget to blink. So there is some, there is some question about you know, whether Mark Zuckerberg is actually a robot or not. And if you saw his testimony, you'll really wonder about that. One thing that I've thought about is, have you ever seen those little you know, things on, they're called CAPTCHAs? When you're signing into a site, there's a button that you click that says, I'm not a robot. You notice Facebook doesn't have one of those? Just saying. OK. All right, so Mark Zuckerberg goes to, goes to testify before Congress. And so he goes up there, and um, um, he's talking about things. And one of the things he said is, um, you know, yes, some of the Facebook data was used incorrectly. I'm really sorry, and it'll never happen again. And so coming out of that, they made a video, and it's now up on Facebook, you can go look at it, that says, yeah, we've changed the way everything works. We're not going to do that anymore. So they have made some changes in Facebook. Some of the things are different. 
But while they were up there in Congress, they talked about a lot of different things. One of the things they talked about was hate speech, you know, that we can't have hate speech out on the internet. And so Zuckerberg said early in his testimony about hate speech, he said, basically in five, over a five to 10 year period, we're gonna have artificial intelligence tools that we think will be able to go out and figure out this stuff, find this hate speech and take it off the site. Right now, it all has to be done manually. So they have people that are out there reading things and deciding if they should be pulled or not. So he said, yeah, we, we think over the next five or 10 years, we're gonna have an, an AI that can do that. So we'll be able to take care of it for you. Now, a little bit later in the testimony, Ben Sass asked him an interesting question. Can you define hate speech? To which, uh, to which uh, Mark Zuckerberg replied, Senator, I think that's really a hard question. And I think it's one of the reasons why we struggle with it. There are certain definitions we have for it, calling for violence or, and at that point, Sass interrupted. But on the previous slide, we, talk, we saw how he said, I'm pretty sure in five to 10 years, we're gonna have this licked on this hate speech stuff. But he doesn't know what it is. He can't define hate speech. I guess the AI will know it when it sees it. So, you know, of course, one man's hate speech is another man's free speech. And so that was kind of disturbing to me of thinking about, you know, what are they gonna do with this AI? How is uh, Facebook gonna work there? Another thing that people have been um, complaining about with Facebook is, have they been taking off conservative speech? Have they been censoring conservatives on Facebook? Okay, so this brings up a question for us of, okay, we know that there's this stuff going on out there, there's some things out there we're not comfortable with, so should the government come in and regulate Facebook? So I see a lot of people going, no, they shouldn't. Um, we're all on the same page there. So I was thinking about the government regulating Facebook. Boy. You know, think about these, these uh, congressmen and senators. Um, you know, what's the average age of the U.S. Senate? It's, it's like 70 years old, you know? And so, uh, so Senator Graham, he asked a really important question in the uh, testimony there. He said, is Twitter the same as what you do? And so one of the fun things that people do is they go through the testimony and look at the stupid questions that some of the senators ask. And then another thing that's interesting is, they ask a question that obviously was written for them by one of their aides. And then when it comes to the follow-up question, they obviously have no idea what the answer was or what they should do with that. So we're gonna take these people and give them the right, I mean the responsibility to regulate Facebook for us. They're the ones that are gonna get this internet thing straightened out. So I think, I think y'all are with me on, I'm kinda concerned about that. Now another thing that I was really concerned about is what does Facebook think about regulation? You know, in general, companies have people up there on the hill trying to keep res regulation from coming about. So one of the senators asked uh, Mark Zuckerberg about this. It was still Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham said, but you as a company welcome regulation? Zuckerberg said a very important thing there. I think if it's the right regulation, then yes. Okay, so Facebook's okay with being regulated as long as it's the right regulation. Now, what would, some of the, what would the right regulation be? Whenever you have a company that's been successful and has gotten very large, the right regulation for them is always a barrier to entry for somebody else. So what they would like is they would like a way to keep out competition. So I think about for Facebook, what would they think the right regulation is? One type of regulation would be regulation that only a big company could comply with. You know, if they had to document a bunch of stuff, if they had to show that they were able to get through all these things and these things weren't happening, all that kind of stuff. Whenever you get a bunch of regulations, the big companies don't care. They'll just hire another dozen people to work on it. A small startup can't do that. So Facebook would like something, okay, let's make it complicated regulation. Let's do that. And then the second is, maybe they could require technology that a startup wouldn't have access to. Facebook's gonna work the next five years on this hate speech AI. So if they had that, how is, a, how is a, a new startup company gonna be able to compete with that? The third thing that I thought about is, any regulation that's gonna be written now will be written to the current model. So whatever Facebook, however Facebook's working now, that's what they're gonna regulate. But is that gonna take care of the next model? And one question is, 
Is this, you know, closing the gate after the horse has already gone out? Is Facebook the one that we have to worry about going forward? Facebook last year had a 40% increase in ad revenue. That's how they got to that 40 billion. They did that while losing visitors. People used Facebook less, but they made more money. That's actually my goal in life, less work, more money. So Facebook's ahead of me on that one. So you, know, you think about that, what that tells us is something's going on with Facebook. One is, finally the advertisers have thought, we should do this internet thing. So they're throwing money at it. Whereas the people are going, eh, Facebook is kind of passe. You know, we always kid that the, the uh, you know, our children say, oh yeah, Facebook, that's where the grandparents go. And so as I look at it, I think, you know, I don't really have much hope in regulation. I don't really think that we're going to be able to do a great job with that. And so the question is, can the market take care of this problem? And so as we think about the market and how it can take care of the problem is, one of the things is, has the market already moved on from Facebook? How many of y'all have a MySpace account? <laughs> now those, uh, okay, so John in the back, she, she still has one. Uh, I tried to log into mine, but it wouldn't let me in. But it did offer to let me log in with my Facebook ID. <laughs> so, so MySpace was the, one of the first social media uh, places. And it was, it was originally targeted for, um, for music kind of people, but then it opened up larger. And then Facebook came in and ate its lunch. So um, MySpace moved on to Facebook. How many of y'all have a Twitter account? Okay. So Twitter has gotten a lot from, has, has taken a lot of people from Facebook. A lot of the things that used to get posted on Facebook, people are now moving to Twitter. Now, how many of you have an Instagram account? Okay, a few less. Um, so with Instagram, that's what the kids today are doing. So, you know, when I talk to my kids about stuff, they're not putting stuff on Facebook. They're going on Instagram. They're using Snapchat. They're using WhatsApp. Now, an interesting thing about Instagram, though, is who owns Instagram? Facebook. Facebook bought Instagram. So they may have seen the competition coming, and so you can either compete with them or you can buy them. So in thinking about regulation, I think already the competition is coming up for Facebook. And anything we do that inhibits the competition is going to make Facebook that much more powerful. But I really think that in a lot of ways, things have moved on from Facebook. OK, so at this point now, you know a lot more about what Facebook knows about you. You know about what they do about that information. We've talked about some things that might not work in terms of helping with our privacy. And so now, of course, you want me to tell you, what can we do to, save, to help with our privacy? Well, for that, you'll have to invite me back again. 